Hello, everybody. <laughs> Good afternoon. As if you haven't seen me enough already, we're back, right? We're back for our first, uh, I was going to say, what's new Wednesday? It's not what's new Wednesday. You're here for the lunch hour so long with Kimber Bell, of course, highlighting the quilt spring showers. Oh my goodness. What, what fun we're in for, right guys? Hey, I've got uh, my two co-workers and pals here with me helping out. We've got Andrew behind the camera and Libby answering your questions. Thank you guys for helping me out today. Um, Libby will answer as many as she can. And if we can't get to all of them today or if I can't get to it live, of course, we can come back and, and uh, do that a little bit later as well. So good afternoon. Hey, as the name um describes it's a lunch hour so along and um although uh you know it does say so along it's more of what i might call an inspire along or a learn along because what i'm going to be doing is breaking this down week to week um in different chunks of the quilt and sharing my tips and tricks for the different techniques that are used in the quilt so my suggestion would be to just sit back uh grab a cup of coffee eat your eat your uh, lunch and take some notes as I, I saw on here someone said I'm going to uh, take some notes and just relax and, and, and enjoy the next little hour or bit and then uh, when their kit comes or when you have the time of course you can get sewing back our embroidering right then all right so um again this will be every wednesday during the month of march it's at 12 noon mountain standard time it will always be saved or recorded um, you'll find it on YouTube or Facebook so you don't if you don't catch it live no problem I'll uh, always be there for you when you're ready all right okay so let's go ahead and get started the first thing of course maybe I should just show the quilt itself right if you're if you're new here and not sure what we're gonna be talking about over the next few weeks here is the quilt. Isn't that cute? And I've broken it down into different techniques, different parts of the quilt that we'll be going over each week. And uh, we've put together a little graphic to help you uh, stay on track and see what we're doing from week to week. So Andrew, why don't you go ahead and pull that graphic up <laughs> in just one minute, <laughs> he says. Um, it's a graphic that looks like this. You can find it on social media. He's going to pull it up here in just a moment. There we go. Patricia says, I'm new. Glad you showed the quilt. Welcome, Patricia. Uh, you're going to be in for some fun here over the next month of March. Uh, if you have not uh, gotten this quilt yet, quilt shops all over the world are selling this, and we'd love to have you support them. Um, but each week, I'll be sharing uh, some ideas and tips for doing uh, different parts of the quilt. All right. Are we ready, Andrew? Mm -hmm. All right. There we go. That's the graphic you're looking for, guys. So week one says that we're going to be talking about the basics of background quilting and applique. We'll be talking about the sentiment blocks um, and the flower pots. So thank you, Andrew, for, for pulling that up. Of course, find that graphic on social media, on our Facebook page and such, Instagram, so that you will always know what I'm going to be talking about from one week to the next. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk spring showers. This is the book, my friends, and this is what you're going to be looking for. And this is for machine embroidery only. So if you are new to um, Kimberbell, uh, welcome. And uh, machine embroidery is kind of what we do here. We have some sewing, a little bit of sewing here and there, but our main focus is machine embroidery. This is the book that you're going to be looking for at your shop. Um, shops also sell these online. When you open it up, there you see the CD. So all of the instru uh, not instructions necessarily, well, our bonus instructions, I guess I should say, for the bonus projects are on the CD, but all the embroidery files for doing this quilt and three additional bonus projects that you'll see on the back here are all included on that CD. All right, so that's what you're looking for. If you've never done a machine embroidery before, 
you may just want to check it out at a, a favorite quilt shop of yours um, who sell embroidery machines because it's a whole lot of fun. All right. So I just want to show you real quick because I'm just so happy with our team of um, our product development team who has made this so easy for you to follow along from right here. Let's see. From the very first page, it's they're showing graphics of how to cut and sort your fabric and put it into the different uh, resealable bags, just making it really easy for you guys to do one uh, one little portion of your quilt at a time. And then there's a whole list of the fabric fabrics that are required. Um, this, of course, we did all in our Kimberbell fabric line. We have a Kimberbell basics fabric line and a, a series of solids that are all listed there. And then if you go even to the next uh, page here, you're going to see all the cutting diagrams. Isn't that wonderful? So you'll never miss cut a piece of fabric. You know that you always have enough fabric for your project if you will cut according to the diagrams. So our team has really laid this out for you so that you have the best experience possible. Um, of course, many shops out there are selling um, fabric kits for this. So find those online or at your local quilt shop if you uh, wanna jump in and start making this project. It's never too late, right? Um, if you have this book in front of you, I just want to direct your attention to another page that talks about the quilting options. I'm on page 12 here. Let's take a closer look. And on page 12, it, it tells you that, you know, you've got op quilting options. Um, a lot of people will want to make this quilt. Um, they'll applique it, the whole thing. They'll put the blocks together. And then they take it to a long arm quilter and have them quilt the, the quilt. Or maybe you may want to do that yourself by doing something like a stitch in the ditch method and such. But that is something that we talk about here as one of the options. The second option, of course, is that you can do option two, which we call at Kimberbell, we call it block by block quilting. That is what I'm actually going to show you um, throughout this so long on how we do the block by block quilting, how easy it is um, to do, how to put it together on your machine so that by the time you get your project done, it truly is done. You don't have to then take it to a long armor to have quilted. Of course, you know, many of you may also have a long arm machine and may want to do it um, that way, but this is a way to do it as you go. And then when it's all said and done, even the borders being quilted on your embroidery machine, you're literally done, which is so much fun to see it from beginning to end. Now, on page 12 and 13 of your instructions, you're also going to find that we have actually outlined through step-by-step -step diagrams how to do your background quilting. I'm going to show you how to do it on the machine itself, but this is a good reference point if you later want to go, oh, now how did she do that? You could, of course, watch the video or see the step-by-step -step diagrams on page 12 and 13. We also include instructions for background quilting on those pieced blocks. So this is what I'm talking about with the pieced blocks. These log cabin blocks that you see here are actually pieced and quilted on the embroidery machine, what we would call in the hoop. And so we will explain how to do that as well. All right. So. As I mentioned, uh, week one is all about, you know, the basics of applique and background quilting. So what I want to do is actually start with one of the sentiment blocks. I already did this one, which I absolutely love. It's I just love the sentiment itself. Let's weather it together. Isn't that sweet? Do you have a friend that you, you know thinks, you know what? Life is better when we weather things together, right? So I love that block. I quilted this on the embroidery machine and then embroidered on top of that quilting. And now when I go to cut this block down to size, um, it's gonna be the perfect size to fit into my quilt when it's time to put it all together. So I've already done that, but right now I'm gonna demonstrate a different sentiment block. Let's turn to page. You've got your book in front of you. I'm going to do Sometimes a good puddle is all you need. Okay, so that is on page 44. All right. Now, 
there's a couple things I want you to note on page 44. Because we're doing the background quilting, I want you to look at this. So let's get a close up, Andrew, of this area right here. Okay. It says block by block quilting instructions. And it does mention that the following steps are only used, are only needed if you are doing the block by block quilting method from Kimberbell. That's what we are going to do today. So if that's what you're planning on doing too, um, that's that's what we're, where we're gonna follow along. But what's cool is that if you're wondering like which background quilting design we used in our sample, well, it will tell you right here. The sample was made using, and then it gives you the number and the file name of the quilting background quilting block. So this says that we are using the six by six horizontal design of KDQ 066. All right, well, I'm gonna pull that up on my machine, okay? So let me show you in a few different ways because we all learn a little bit differently, right? So I'm gonna show you a few different ways of how to visualize what I'm about to do on the machine, all right? First of all, before I go too far into this, I should mention that if you are looking for the background quilting designs for that we used for the Spring Showers quilt, you can find them at Kimberbell.com. Go to products, it's at the very top of your page, and then click on background quilting, and there you will find all of the background quilting designs that we have used on this project and so many more. All right? Okay, so. You've got your background quilting ready to go. And you want to put your design, in this case, it's sometimes a good puddle is all you need, okay? You wanna put that on top of your background quilting. There's a few different ways you can do this, all right? The first is if you have software. Not everyone has software, and I get that. So I'm gonna tell you a few ways you can do this. But if you have software, what you're going to want to do is bring up your background quilting design. I printed it right here so you can see it better. It would look something like this. Okay. All right. Let me back up a little bit so we can see the whole thing. All right. This is what it would look print like, right? I just printed this on my computer so that you could visually see what I'm about to do on the machine. This is the background quilting. Don't you love the raindrops going at an angle? I think that is really, really cute, okay? So the idea is that on your software, you would bring up this file. It is the six by six design. And then you add this file, which are the words, this says, sometimes a good puddle is all you need. When this is put together on your, on your software, you put, load it into your machine, and then you just start stitching away, all right? You'll have everything quilted, you'll have uh, your background ready to go, um, and you're gonna have a, fin a fully finished block by the time you're done stitching this, quilted and everything. So that is option number one, is to do it in your embroidery software. Save it and then bring it to your machine, okay? Option number two is that you could um, pull up your design. Again, it would be this. You would look for this on your machine that you've saved to a USB, okay? You would pull this design up. You would stitch the whole thing all by itself according to the directions that are found in the book. And then after that, it's all said and done, you would say, ah, now I want to put this on top of it, right? So then you, after this whole thing is stitched, you would now bring up this design and stitch it. That's option number two. And then finally, option number three is that I can't say that all machines have this feature, but I would say a great majority of them have this feature. And the feature is the add button, okay? That's what I'm gonna show you on my screen today. That is that I can pull up that same background quilting design, the rain, and before I embroider anything, I'm gonna click a little button that just says add. I click add, 
I find this design and then it automatically merges the two together and then we can do our embroidery. All right, so there's three different options for you. Let's go ahead and do that very thing um, on my screen. And I, I brought a machine that has a really big screen on it so that it's easier for you to visually see what's happening. Um, everything, now you may not have a machine like this that shows all of you know the designs that are on there. Um, that's okay. But uh, what I wanna share with you is that Whatever I'm seeing on this screen right here is basically what you would be doing on your computer, either in software or what you would see when you pull up any of these design files. This way, I can just visually show you all at once what I'm doing to put the designs together. All right. So the very first thing is I know that I need to um, use the design called KDQ066. It's called Weather One, and I'm gonna click on that, okay? Now, again, if you don't have this option on your own machine, this is what you would be doing on your computer, all right? Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the folder that has the background quilting in it, and then two folders will come up, one that will say embroidery files, and the next will say instructions. Okay, we don't need the instructions. I'm gonna show you right now how to do this. All right, now all of the embroidery file options come up. There's nine different ones. You can use them for basically any of the major machine brands that are out there uses one of these files. I'm on um, a machine that uses a PES file. So I'm gonna click on PES. And remember in the book, it said that I use the six by six horizontal design. Look at all the background quilting designs that are coming with this, it's just awesome. This is nice because when you want to use them for um, different size blocks, it's all made to fit that exact size block. It's really, really awesome. And it works with clear blue tiles too. Okay, so the first one I wanna do is the six by six uh, weather design, right? And it's the horizontal, so it's this one right here. And it pulls it up, right? You see that design, it's the background quilting. Now, I mentioned that you can do an add button. Well, first, on this particular machine, I'm gonna hit set because that's what I wanna do. But do you see this over here? This says add, all right? Okay, Andrew, can we get maybe a little closer on that? Mm -hmm. Oh yes, that's better. Okay, so I'm gonna click on add. Again, not all machines will have this, but the majority will. So I'm showing you this here, add. And now it takes me back to like a, like a home screen and I'm thinking, oh no, where did my design go? Well, I'm just going to click on this button because I had saved it to this USB here. And I'm going to find the design I am looking for. If I look at the top of page 44 to the right, it says what the embroidery file name is. It's the five by seven, um, a, a, we call it a good puddle. Okay, that picture is right here. I'm clicking on that. And then I hit set. Look what's about to happen. Do you notice what ha just happened? that automatically put that design smack in the middle, and then it also has the background quilting around it. Now when I click on embroidery, let's go down just a little bit. There we go. There's the embroidery button. Boom. Now I'm ready to do this. Isn't that awesome? So if you look at, let's go ahead and go back to page, I think it was 12 and 13, yes. If you look back at the block by block quilting instructions on the bottom of page 12 and then over to 13, what I'm about to show you right now is what is happening in these instructions. So feel free to you know go back and review that at any time. All right, so I am ready to stitch this design out. All right. So I have already hooped my stabilizer. I used uh, Kimberbell's uh, light cutaway stabilizer. Of course, this is our slap bands that make it really nice and easy to keep 
uh, tidy and labeled, right? So this is our light cutaway. That's what I would recommend on doing a quilt such as this. I've already put it in my hoop. And the first step, the first step, as you see outlined on page 12, is that it is going to stitch a an outline so I know where to place my uh, batting. Now, we have a new thing here at Kimberbell called the Hoop Cam. Woo, woo, woo. Let's give a shout out for the Hoop Cam because now you can visually see what I'm doing here a little bit more easily. I love it. So thank you, Andrew, uh, for making that possible. Let's go ahead and stitch that first outline so we know where to place our batting. Diana says, love the Hoop Cam. <laughs> Okay, uh, Fassy, she brings up a good question. She says, Kim, did you back the fabric with an iron-on stabilizer? And I did, Fabby. So let's go ahead, while that's stitching out, let's go ahead and go to the front of the camera. I'm glad you asked that, um, uh, Fassy, because I certainly did. One of the things that we recommend at Kimberbell is that especially on background fabrics, like the background block where you're stitching on top of it, to help pre prevent puckering, there's a few things that you can do. I like to, you know, sometimes spray it with a little bit of um, a spray starch alternative like Best Press. And then what I do after that is I will fuse our Kimberbell fusible backing onto the back side of that fabric. Now, notice I still did, used my light, light cutaway, right? My lightweight cutaway stabilizer. But in addition to that stabilizer, I have fused a backing to it that stays in there. It's permanent, it's not going anywhere. But you won't believe the difference it makes in pu possible puckering by ironing that on, fusing it, keeping it in its place. And it still remains very soft and supple, just like normal fabric would. So yes, we definitely recommend doing that. I've already done that on all of my background blocks. All right. So the first thing we're going to do now, if I'm looking back at, uh, let's see, I am doing my background quilting. So I'm still on page 12 because the background quilting is going to go first, right? The next thing I'm going to lay down on top of that um, square, that outline, is a piece of batting. Now, again, another Kimberbell product that we highly recommend is the Kimberbell um, Project Batting. This Project Batting is perfect for quilting in the hoop, for doing any type of project that re that is asking for batting and you're doing it on your embroidery machine. We definitely recommend our project bedding. It's got some stabilization in it. It's not going to like distort when you go, the stitches go on top of it, but it's also got the perfect loft. All right, so check out that as well. What I've done is I've cut a size of batting just larger than that square block. In this case, I've cut it to seven by seven. Do you have to measure every time? No, just lay a piece of batting that's larger than your square that just stitched out and you're good to go because you're gonna be cutting it down to the right size here in just a minute. All right, let's go to our hoop cam, shall we, <laughs> Andrew? All right, so I'm laying this piece of project batting over the top, just making sure that the entire area is covered, all right? If I want to double check and make sure that my, um, and that batting isn't going to move. I might take a couple of pieces of our Kimberbell paper tape and just tape it in place there so it doesn't shift. And now I'm going to do what we call the tack down line. Cheryl, Cheryl says, Andrew rocks. Love the hoop cam. <laughs> Andrew, you've got fans. <laughs> Thanks, Cheryl. He loves it. <laughs> All right.
Okay, that's stitching down two times just to give it some, um, you know, to reduce any risk of those stitches popping. Now I'm going to just trim away the extra batting. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and go to our overhead camera. I've got a table full of stuff. Something came unplugged. I'm getting there. Sorry about that, Kim. That's okay. Ah, we're back. Sorry about that. I promise you didn't miss anything. I stopped talking. <laughs> and I'll rewind myself 30 seconds. How's that? Okay, so now you have extra batting that needs to be cut away. I just took our Kimberbell applique duckbill scissors. I like to lay this flat and look how nice and close that cut gets there to the edge. Whenever, and I, I tell this to every time I use these duckbills, I think you get a better, cleaner cut if you will use the duckbill towards the center of your design. In this case, it's just towards the center of this box. But even when you're doing um, like regular applique, always put this duckbill towards the center. This is what is protecting your stitches from getting snipped. And then the angle of this blade here just gives a really nice clean cut. You're gonna love it. All right, so we're done with that. Now I'm gonna place it back onto uh, the machine where it's going to do an outline stitch, a placement line for where our fabric needs to cover. Wrong way. Let's try that again. Kim, we have a question for you. Okay. Um, Devon Johnson is wondering how many of the projects are bigger than the five by seven hoop? If there's a few, suggestion okay. to resize the image to fit the small hoop. Okay. Great. Well, let's go ahead and go to this uh, front camera to answer that. It was Devon, right? Devon, that is a great question. And I am so happy to tell you that every project, every design in this quilt can be done with a 5x7 hoop. Isn't that awesome? That's so cool, right? So all of them can be done with a 5x7 hoop. If it needs uh, double hooping, of course, we give really great instructions for it. But I think what we do on here are more like pieced picture blocks. And uh, we, we give you all the instructions for doing that. In fact, we're going to do that today when we do the flower pots. All right. So just because you're seeing the design look bigger, our digitizers have made it possible so that even with a 5 by 7 hoop, you can do it. Now, the other part of that, though, is that... Um, if you have a 5x7 hoop only, you may not be able to do all the background quilting designs that I am showing here. But the good news is, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, is that I'm going to be able to show you how to do background quilting, even with a smaller hoop, by using clear blue tiles um, a little bit differently. All right, so hang in there with me, Devon, because um, it's all possible, and I'm excited to share all of that with you. All right. Okay. So our next step was the placement line for our fabric. Let's go ahead and go to the overhead camera. Can we get any closer on this? Oh, I'm giving Andrew his exercise for the day. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Everyone give a shout out to Andrew. Good guy. Good guy. All right. There we go. Maybe a little closer. I should have done this maybe in a darker thread so you could see it better. But basically what I just did was an outline 
of um, where the fabric's going to go. And you're going to notice that that outline is a quarter inch outside beyond where we stitch, we tacked down the batting. Do you know what that means? That means you're not going to have any batting in your seams when you sew this together. That is pretty cool stuff. So this is an oversized piece of fabric. We always like to go oversized because the process of embroidering pulls those th those fibers in of your fabric and you want to start out larger. It pulls it in as it stitches and then you cut it down to the size you need afterwards. So we do start a little bit larger. Like I mentioned earlier, we already fused a fusible backing onto that background fabric. And now I'm simply laying it over the top. And what's going to happen is it's now going to stitch what we call the tack down line. And the tack down line is just going to tack that fabric down and make sure that it's not going to move anywhere when we go to do our quilting. All right. So going back to the hoop cam, let's go ahead and do the tack down line. We have another question for you, Kim. Sure. Barbara Esselstein is wondering, like the candy corn quilt, do the background blocks get cut larger if we are doing background quilting? Okay, like the candy corn quilt. Okay, so anytime, whether it's the candy corn quilt or any of the Kimberbell quilts, yes, the background blocks are a little bit larger and then they're cut, you quilt your design and you actually stitch the applique or whatever the design is on top of the quilting, then it's cut down to size. I hope that helps. Did that help answer that question? I think I so. Think that's a question. Yeah. If I wasn't clear enough, you let me know for sure. Okay, so this is done now what we call the tack down line. And if you could visually see where my finger is like pushing up against this fabric here, underneath it is batting. But a quarter inch beyond is where um, our seam line is and where the this tack down ends up being. All right, now to my favorite, favorite part. Let's go ahead and go not just to the hoop cam, but let's show you what's on the screen of my machine so that you can visually see what's happening here. This is now the next step is going to show me the background quilting, which if I'm looking at a paper, because I like to show you in different ways, right? That this is what is about to be stitched out. All right, all right, let's do it. Okay. Barbara asked, let's see. Barbara says, are there measurements for cutting larger in the book? Yes, Barbara, you'll be happy to know that everything is outlined in the book. Um, exactly the measurements that we recommend um, are there. So that's not a problem, okay? All right, um, Sandy asks, what size of hoop am I using? For this particular one, I am using an eight by eight inch hoop. And the reason being is that uh, for the background quilting, it needed to be a little bit larger than that five by seven. So that's why I'm using an eight by eight. Again, if you don't, if five by seven is the largest size hoop you have, no worries because I will be showing you how to do a background quilting using clear blue tiles when you have a smaller hoop. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. We are almost done with that. Super excited. All right. It goes really fast um, and the results are just beautiful. Um, I'm really excited about these background quilting designs because I want you to think beyond the quilt. What you are doing when you download these designs is you are building your own library, your very own library of background quilting designs that you can use on anything. Um, and so think about it way beyond this quilt. I think these raindrops are darling. 
Okay. You want to see the quilting? All right, there it is. Let's go to this camera over here. <laughs> go, Andrew, go. Go, Andrew, go. Okay. <laughs> uh, there we go. Ooh, kind of, sort of. The light, the glare. Oh, maybe that's... I don't know if you can tell, but there's cute little raindrops coming from there that I think are to die for cute. There you go. All right. So that is done, the background quilting. But what comes up on my machine next, because I combined the designs, is this. It's this portion of it. So at this point, what you would do is turn to page 44, and that's when you now start the directions for putting together the cute little puddle design and the rest of the words that say, sometimes a good puddle is all you need. All right, so now we're at page 44 and we're going to stitch the first step. It shows it up on my screen as well, on my on my machine. But the first step is says to stitch the water underlay placement line, okay? As you're gonna notice too in the book, you're gonna see that there are different color boxes along with each step. And those color boxes match the color of thread that we used um, in the sample. So it gives you a pretty good guideline um, to use the same colors or similar colors of thread. Of course, the beauty of machine embroidery is that you can use whatever floats your boat, right? So to speak. So if there's another type of color that you want to use in different areas, certainly just go for it. But this is what we're using. Um, if the box has slashes in it, if it just, it's got little diagonal slashes, that means that the color you use will not show in the finished project. So it doesn't matter what color thread you have on that part. But if the color is, or if the box is shown with a little uh, color such as blue, like I'm about to do here, that means that color will show and you will want to pay close attention to what thread color you're putting um, on your machine. All right. Okay. So first step is to stitch the placement line for the water. Um, real quick, Libby, do we have, I don't think I brought my vinyl. Do we have any blue vinyl here? I don't know. I can't I can ask her. Okay. Libby's going to run and ask it. I, I did bring my Mylar, but I don't think, I'm not seeing that I brought my, uh, oh, Shay's going to find it. Thank you, Shay my vinyl, which we'll be using here in just a minute. Okay, so we placed the line. Now I'm going to take a piece of mylar. Let's show you what it looks like. In your embellishment kit, uh, we do have an embellishment kit available for this quilt. And in it, you would have received two pieces, two big pieces of mylar. And then in the instructions, it tells you how much to cut it down to so that you have enough mylar for the different projects. But look what this does. Can you see what's about to happen? This is going to give that puddle the look of water. How cool is that? So we're going to place this down. Um, and then I'm going to tape it in place so it doesn't shift while it then does a, um, a tack down line and uh, stitching a little fill design on top. Okay. All right. So I've placed that on here. I just covered the top of that puddle outline. And to prevent it from shifting, of course, I'm going to put a little piece of tape there on each end. All right, and now I'm ready to stitch out the decorative uh, line on top, or decorative stitches on top. <laughs> Pam, you're so funny. It's so true, Pam. She says, you're like me, can't find these. 
<laughs> you were lucky you have someone searching for you. I seem to tear up my sewing space looking for, for it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yay! She, you want to say hi to everyone, Shay? <laughs> hi! <laughs> I, yes, this is perfect. This is perfect. Okay. I don't know. This is actually in your embellishment kit, but I forgot to bring it. So there we go. The nice thing is we have Sweet as Candy colored vinyl here at the offices. And uh, this is a good plug for it anyway, right? <laughs> We've got all these fun colors of blue vinyl that are uh, pre-packaged. Everyone's saying, yay, Shay, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, and I'm just going to cut a piece of one of those for the rest of this. You know, we roll with it. We roll with it. Okay, so I'm going to find uh, one of these pieces that I think would look good. <laughs> there we go. And now we'll be ready to rock and roll. See, you never let them see a sweat. <laughs> okay, Libby, while that's stitching out, was there another question? Yes, here is a question from Pam Pierce Reagan. Okay. She's wondering, do you put fusible backing on every piece of fabric or just on the background fabric? You know what, Anne? That is a really good question. I'll tell you. To be honest, it, de it kind of depends. What I would normally do, let's go ahead and go to the front camera, is most definitely I would always add fusible backing to any background fabric that I'm stitching onto. Okay? No doubt about that. But as far as like applique pieces and such, I usually don't put it on there, except if I'm doing like, maybe I'm taking a white applique piece and I'm putting it on top of something that is black, right? Um, just to keep this simple, I'm putting a white on top of a black piece of fabric and I don't want it to look gray. It's called shadowing, right? So what I would do on that applique piece of the white applique piece is I would fuse a little piece of the fusible backing onto it. It, it creates another layer of barrier between the white and the black that's underneath it, and it'll keep that white fabric staying white. So for example, if you want white clouds and you don't want gray clouds, you want white clouds, right? If I were to put that onto a darker fabric, it could be black, it could be red, it could be a checkered fabric, and you don't want to see through it, then always put a piece of fusible backing on the back of that applique piece. Other than that, um, regular appliques that aren't going to show any shadowing, I don't worry about it. So hopefully that helps answer that question. Okay, so the next thing is, let's see, um, hmm, place the decorative fill. Oh, we're going to tear away the extra mylar. Okay, ooh, I love this part, guys. <laughs> There's, there's something so very satisfying about tearing this away. Like, have you ever peeled a sunburn? <laughs> I like to, I like to think of it like that. <laughs> Sounds gross, right? <laughs> All right. I'm just kidding. Well, kind of. <laughs> you just lift this up and you just tear it away. There's no need to cut it. It's just, it's going to lift right up um because of that those decorative stitches around it and you just pull away any of the extra already okay let's go to this camera to see if we can get an up close of how beautiful that mylar makes this oh okay the glisten the shine the 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 puddle that makes you want to jump in it right all of that was done with a decorative stitch over the top that really tacked it down. And then we're going to do now the next step, which is um, stitching the words, okay? And then after stitching the words, that's when we're gonna put down our piece of um, blue vinyl on top of that. And it's gonna look like a true puddle. I'm super excited. <laughs> Andrew, you're having a hard time following my craziness, aren't you? I know. <laughs> there we go. So we're going to stitch the words first. Then we're going to lay this over the top and stitch that. And then we will be done with that block. All right. 
So let me quickly uh, change the thread. And Libby, you can tell me in the meantime if there are any questions. Yes. Okay. Okay, here is a question from Anita Kohout. Okay. She's wondering, will one roll of project batting complete this quilt? Ooh, you know what? I, boy, that is a good question. I think it will. Um, I have not taken measurements on it. Let me go ahead and I'm just going to put my foot down now and stitch the words and then answer your questions. Um, Anita, you asked, would one roll? My guess is yes, but I, I just don't, I can't say for sure. My guess would be yes. I think where you would be safer to get two rolls just because you also are going to be quilting your borders and that's going to require more batting. So I, I probably wouldn't stop with just one roll. And you know what? You'll use it for other things too. So, but I've never done the math on it. I just kind of use it as I go. I always have plenty on hand. Let's just say that. <laughs> Good question. Okay. What other questions? Deb Schneller is wondering if you aren't doing the quilting, yeah. does the design have the placement and tack down stitching? Okay. So, um, Yes, kind of, sort of. <laughs> so let's go back to page 44. If you are not doing the quilting, um, you are actually, going, well, maybe I should say this. Let's go back to, let me find it. Um, blah, blah, blah. It's all about how you're hooping it. And that is found on page, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, here we go. If you look at the bottom of page 11, uh, was it Deb? Deb, maybe yeah. Deb, okay. Look at the bottom of page 11 where it says hooping instructions. You would follow the traditional hooping instructions that you find there. If you turn to page 12, you're also gonna find instructions for what we call background placement hooping. And that's a little bit different um, as well. So it, it will always say what type of hooping that you are using. So let's look at the bottom of page 44, okay? And where right below it, uh, where it says block by block quilting, and then you go down to hooping instructions, you would actually follow starting there where it says see page 11. You'd see page 11 for your hooping instructions, and then you go straight into the directions as they're outlined um, in the book. I hope that helps. Okay. Next question. From Julie Haney. Okay. She's wondering, can we also talk about the grass pieced border quilting process? Is each piece quilted before you do the piecing of it? No. What you'll be doing, and we're gonna do this a little bit later um, in the sew along, but I can answer the question now. Let's go ahead and go to the front camera. What you were asking about, and I'm gonna give a reference to everyone else here too, is that there is this darling grass line. Whoop. Whoop. There we go. It's a, a checkered grass line going across. You would be piecing that first and then quilting on top, the grass border. Let's see if I can find it in here. That's a great question. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the grass piece border is found on page 63 of your instructions and you will be uh, piecing it first and then quilting after. Okay, great question. Next question. This is going to take a minute to stitch out, so this is a perfect time to ask your questions. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bring this up. This just came in from Vicki Duvall. 
Okay. Can I use block by block with clear blue tiles? Okay, Vicki, that's a really good question. Um, no, but there's a good reason for it. So block by block, boy, I need to have like some demos to show you. Um, block by block is when um, you're quilting one block at a time. Well, I guess I shouldn't say no. This is hard to explain in like 30 seconds. Um, basically, if it is a design that has a traveling line around it, okay? So for example, let's look at this rain design here. Let's get an up close of this. Okay, do you see what is happening in blue is the stitches, right? And so do you see up here, there's traveling lines of blue stitches going all the way around the block. We would use this in a block by block really easily because it's going to be sewn, those traveling stitches are going to be sewn into the seam. But there are designs on there that are more like, um, like a flower design, all right? And those like have swirls and loops and it's an what we would call an all over design. And an all over design can be used with block by block. You can do an all over design in each of these blocks, but you can also use that with clear blue tiles because um, it's an all over design and doesn't have traveling lines. Um, actually, this Friday, I'm gonna be filming some more tutorials on that very question and I can help answer that um, a lot better through a very specialized video for you um, that I'm going to be filming this Friday and then it will probably be out and released to the public a couple weeks after that. So watch for that. But um, yeah, if it's got traveling lines uh, because it's a directional design, then it's best just to use that for block by block. But if it's got an all over design pattern, you can use it for block by block and clear blue tiles. I hope that helps. And the good news is that both types of quilting, block by block and clear blue tiles, if it's an all over design, will come in the one download. Okay. All right. I, I really hope that helps. Again, as I film that this Friday, I'm doing a lot more um, tutorials on using clear blue tiles. I will address that very question in a lot better detail with some samples and that will really help. All right. Okay. All right. Well, we're just going to keep on going here. In fact, while this stitches out, I'm actually going to stop the machine here because I want to be able, you know, we don't want to take you too long. It's your lunch hour, right? And maybe you're uh, on your break at work, right? <laughs> and you need to keep things moving along. Uh, I'm gonna stop this for now. I'll go back to this, but what ends up happening is that you're going to stitch the rest of the lettering. Then, like I said, we're gonna put the blue vinyl on top of that puddle, and then it's gonna stitch that out like an applique, and then you would cut out the rest of the vinyl, and then you're left with just the cutest little puddle. So much fun. And let me show you what that puddle is gonna look like, um, actually on this quilt right here. Let's get a close up of the final puddle. <gasps> Isn't that cute? And here's what I love about how what our digitizers did here is the reason why they're doing the lettering first and then put the the vinyl over on top of it okay remember the vinyl goes on top is because look what happens it looks like the word puddle is actually in the puddle are you kidding me that is just so so stinking cute one of those little design elements that are just like wow they thought of everything right Okay, so we're going to now move ahead to the um, to one of the flower pots blocks, right? Just out of sake of time and moving things along. This is why I call it more of like a, hey, it's better probably to, to watch it and do it then afterwards um, or at a later time. But this is part, let me show this first. These are the three um blocks or the the three little flower pots we're gonna do now okay 
But what I want you to see, this is what's really cool, is that two of these blocks are done first, and I've already done that with this. But then you add a third block, and it looks like, so this is, can all be done in a five by seven. You add this block to it, and you cannot, you just don't tell, you can't tell where um, it's been sewn together. It just all looks like one big row of blocks. And then, of course, uh, one of these weeks, I think it's week four or five, we actually go into more detail about how to make these fun uh, flower embellishments on your embroidery machine, too, which are really cool. All right. So are you ready to make this block? Let's do it. Let me show you. Again, I did this already. What happened was... Let's look, if we're, we're thinking again in different ways of learning, right? If this is the background quilting, and don't you love that? Okay, this is the background quilting of this particular block. When we add on the background quilting in the third uh, flower pot, it's going to look like this. So they all are going to look like they just go together, right? But here's what happens when you pull this design and put it into on top of your, whoop, there we go. You put it on top of your, your uh, background quilting. But I want you to notice something that we mentioned on page, let's go to it. So you know what I'm talking about. I'm looking at page 59, okay? All right, let's do an up close of this. Um, Okay, well, let me go back to this one that I did last night, okay? So this is the block I did last night. It was the two flower pots, right? And so um, I pulled that in, and it says that I need to move my blocks down. You're going to look at this diagram so that it was a quarter inch um, from, the, from one side and then a half inch from the other. I could do that easily in software, but I can also do it on the machine itself, right? So visually looking at that, if we're looking at these, right? This is the background quilting. This file gets pulled in, but if it's like directly pulled into the center, do you see what's happening here? It's gonna look like you're, and you don't move it, it's gonna look like you're your flower pots are just floating in the air, right? In the middle of that block. So what you need to do is shift it down a little bit so that the bottom, as it shows in that diagram in your book, the bottom of the applique block sits down here towards the, towards the bottom of your fabric tack down line. Whoops, there we go. Okay, so it was right here. You need to shift it till it gets right. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So it gets there. Notice you're not putting it all the way down because this is your seam. And what this ends up looking like when it's done is that the, the flower pots, once you've sewn in the seam, the flower pots are resting down at the bottom. Isn't that cool? Let's look at this. Okay. What I just showed here is what ends up looking like this in the end. Those flower pots are not up here, just kind of floating along. They have been pushed down to the bottom so that it looks like it's just resting on the grass. All right? So I'm gonna show you how I did that uh, with this next block. The next block we're gonna do is the third flower pot. It's the one that's been tipped over, right? And let's look at what the printout looks like for that. Maybe right here. Thank you. It's nice to have lots of help around here. <laughs> I need all the help I can get. All right. So if this is our background quilting block, let's go ahead and go to there. This is what we're about to do. And this gets pulled into your machine on your software. It says in that diagram that you we're on page, page 59, okay? 
you need to move that down so that, that it lands about a quarter inch away, right? That makes sense. Whoop. <laughs> I can't do this backwards, guys. There we go. Ha. Ah. So if it's up here, it gets moved down. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If you guys only could see what I'm trying to do here. It's all backwards. I promise it's not just me. <laughs> okay. That that bottom of where that ends has to rest down here right before that seam is, is done, right? So when you go to sew this together and this becomes your seam area, notice that not only your background quilting stitch gets sewn into the seam, but then this rests right on top of the seam. Let's look at what it looks like in the quilt. Okay, so right here is that, but when you, when this is all said and done, if you do that, that's gonna look like that flower pot has just tipped over on the grass and then looks like it's just sitting right there on top, right? Okay. <laughs> <sighs> Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go here. If I am looking at page 59, it says that I need the KDQ067 Plant One Design. I'm going to go to home here. And let me find my design. Okay, I'm on Plant One. And then I'm going to go to Quilting. And then the Files. I'm on a machine that uses PES, so I hit PES. And then the book says to use the four by six vertical design. All right, I'm gonna go down here and find my four by six. If your machine does not pull these things up or the names up, up, not a problem. Just find these things on your computer first and then save them to only the ones that you need save those on your USB. I think that will save you a lot of um, trouble. Okay, so this is the design I've pulled up and I'm gonna hit set. Now don't forget, what are we gonna do next? I've gotta add um, that, that flower pot design, right? So to do that, I'm gonna hit add. Then I'm gonna find the flower pot, the tipped flower pot. This is something you can do in software, you can do it on your machine, or you can just bring them in one at a time. All right, now I hit set. All right, now this one actually, notice this, it actually brings it up so it goes right down into that seam and I want it to lift a little bit further up. I have it, so I'm gonna hit edit and I'm just going to shift that design so that it lands there we go. There we go. It's going to land right where it needs to. Where did my, oh, here we go. This is what I'm, if you can't see it here, this is exactly what I'm doing. It was down here when it got pulled in. So I'm just lifting it so that this lands right on that inner line. Okay. That's what I'm showing there. Can we get any closer on that, Andrew? Okay, awesome. So this is what I'm showing right here. All right, now I can hit OK and hit embroidery. All right, so you know the drill. We are going to follow the instructions as outlined on step 11 or page 11. I have already hooped. This is a five by seven hoop, by the way. I have already hooped my stabilizer, my lightweight cutaway stabilizer in there. And I am ready to stitch the outline for my um, batting. Oops. Change to a larger. And, oh, I forgot. Okay. Actually, because of the outline on this, it's saying that I need to change that to a larger one. Um, and I forgot to do that. Okay. So if I was doing, if I had my other, I don't want to take it out of this one. 
actually. I don't want to take it out of that because I want to finish that. But that's basically what you're doing. You're putting one design on top of the other and then uh, combining them. Now, the other side of this is that you could, I actually stitched this one already, okay? You could just stitch the background first, like I did here. Can we get an up close of that? I went through all the same steps that we used um, when we did the puddle design. There we go. That's good. All right. So I used all the same steps for that. I know it's hard to tell the background quilting on that because we have a really um, decorative fabric there and I used a cream design or cream thread, but this is what it looks like. Oh, that's a little bit better. There we go. This is what it ends up looking like. If you could see it, that's, that's what we have. All right. So this was to show you that you could um, just stitch one thing at a time. You would stitch uh, this background first, and then you add, um, you fill, you finish that, and then you add your um, third flower pot on top of that. All right. Now, tips on cork. You just use it like you would a normal applique piece, and uh, like a piece of fabric. Okay. So you're going to have a placement line for this cork. And then you're going to do your tack down line on top of it and then cut away the extra. Beyond that, it, the leaves are the same way. It's going to stitch out your um, placement line for your leaf. Let's go ahead and go back to this one, Andrew. I love the decorative outline on these leaves. I think they are beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? And don't you just love the way that cork looks? That literally is just like laying a piece of fabric down. It's really nice and soft. This cork comes in your um, embellishment kit as well. All right. And then uh, once that block, that third flower pot was done, we would sew the three together. And there you go. You have a row of flower pots. All right. So whoop, there you have it. <laughs> and here we go. Kim's backwards again there. Oh, isn't that cute? Now, I can picture all kinds of things to do with just that, that row of flower pots. Are you with me here? You're also probably thinking, oh, that would be so cute as a table runner, like the end, each end of a table runner. Or that'd be so cute as a pillow. Or that would be so cute along the bottom hem of a little girl's dress. Am I right, Libby? So cute. Yeah, so cute. Ah, the bottom hem of an apron. Hmm, lots of ideas. Yeah, I bet you have them too. All right, so there you have it. That's, again, the brief overview of how background quilting is done. Um, if you don't have a hoop that's large enough to accommodate um, the background quilting that we have chosen in, in different blocks, you can use the clear blue tiles method um, to do this. Um, but you would need to use a background quilting design that works with clear blue tiles, all right? So we are going to, that's another one of those scenes I'm gonna be filming this Friday as a, a tutorial. But if you don't wanna wait till Friday to do your background quilting, if you have a hoop that doesn't accommodate the larger quilting, um, you can go to, uh, I believe it is the very first part one so along I did with home is where the haunt is. And I talked about this very thing. You have a large block that needs to be have background quilting to it, but you don't have a hoop size large enough for that. You can do it with clear blue tiles. And if you want, if you can't wait uh, to, to see the, to see exactly how to do that, then just, you know, sneak over to the to uh, YouTube and or our Facebook page, find part one of Home is Where the Haunt is, so along, and I show you how to do that with the, um, the witch hat block, all right? So 
even if you've got those smaller hoops, my friends, you can still do the background quilting. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Any other quick questions before we end this lunch hour? Here's one. Okay. Terry Ann Barone Murray okay. is wondering what thread do you use in your bobbin? Hmm, that's a great question. Okay, so you're going to want to check with your uh, specific brand of machine. I know for the machine that I'm using today, it is a sewing uh, or not sewing. It's an embroidery machine only. So uh, with this particular brand, that means that I would be using a 90 weight bobbin thread. It's really just whatever bobbin thread you normally use with your embroidery machine, you can use with background quilting. So in this case, it's a 90 weight. If I was using a machine that has a, um, a combo machine, like it does sewing and machine embroidery, with this particular brand, it's a 60 weight. So really that's something that you're going to have to find out through your dealer or through, um, you know, your your manual, your machine manual to find out what weight of bobbin thread you're going to want to use. But it is just what I normally use on a machine. That's what I would use for background quilting too. Great question. Okay. All right. Here's one more. Okay. Libby's got another one for me. Maybe. Okay. So the question is from Belinda Colt Bauer. Okay. And she's wondering, does each block tell you what size hoop to use? Does each block tell you? Um, it does if, if you are doing the design only. If you are not doing background quilting and you are doing the design only, it will tell you what um, hoop to use because it says it in the in the file name, all right? So for example, like these flower pots, if I wasn't doing the background quilting, if I look on the top of page 57, the file name always starts with the size of hoop you're gonna use. And in this case, it was five by seven, all right? Now, if you're using background quilting, that's a little bit different and it's gonna depend on the, um, oh my gosh, uh, it's gonna be, depend on the embroidery field of the background quilting design. And you can find that in um, the, the download instructions with your, um, when you download the background quilting file, you'll have a chart there and it will tell you uh, what the embroidery field is. And then you find out, you know, what machine, what hoop to use based on that embroidery field. So yeah, yeah, great question. All these are great questions. All right. So if you want to get started on this and you have your kit, you know, give it a whirl. Try out the, the three sentiment blocks would be my challenge uh, to you before next week. Um, if you don't have your kit yet, I bet it's going to be arriving any day now. And the sentiment blocks really are quite simple. I would suggest uh, starting with let's weather it together. I would do that as my very first sentiment block. It is the most straightforward, easy block there is to do. Then I would probably go to sometimes a good puddle is all you need. And then finally, the last sentiment is no rain, nor fl no flowers. And that gives you, oh, there we go. Uh, that gives you some more practice with some simple appliques there with the bird and the flowers. So try those three blocks out before next week. And then I would also recommend trying out a uh, your blocks on the flower pots because those are just too stinking cute, right? All right, so let's talk about what we're gonna do next Wednesday. It shows on my little uh, timeline here that we're gonna do talk about iron-on vinyl applique with the boots and the umbrellas. Let's take a close look at that here on the quilt. Look at those umbrellas. Okay, there's a little bit different of a technique to use because it's not difficult. It's just that we're adding in a little extra something with the iron-on vinyl. Okay, this is an iron-on vinyl that came in, also came in in the embellishment kit. We'll be talking about how to apply that iron-on vinyl to make both, uh, oh my gosh, the frog. 
Ah, so cute. We're going to be talking about how to do that iron on vinyl with those umbrellas, as well as the boots. Are you kidding me? Okay. And look, the boots all have something kind of fun and unique with them. Let's take a closer look at this one. This has, you know, the flowers coming out and it's got the little boot straps there across the top. We'll be talking about um, that. Look at this one. Don't you love even the tiniest of writing is on here that says spring showers. Just adorable. And then finally, did you know that is an actual boot buckle? Yes, that little boot buckle comes in your embellishment kit as well. We'll be going over how to add that uh, through um, embroidering these blocks. Okay, look at that cute little mushroom. Oh my goodness. So many fun things ahead, my friends. So many fun things. I sure hope that this uh, the start of this so along helped you, um, you know, again, try out some of those blocks this week. And then I will see you again next Wednesday, of course, at 10 a.m. for What's New Wednesday. And then again at noon, Mountain Standard Time for week two of the spring shower so along. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.